Every website has a folder that contains the root of its files. The configuration of the website specifies the IP address, protocol, port and hostname the website will use. These are collectively known as bindings. Consider this example. If you set your website up as follows, www.extremecertification.com is set up to use HTTP. Later on, it is suggested that people may not like typing in such a long domain name. Another domain name is purchased, www.extremecert.com. With bindings, you can simply add the new binding for the new domain to the existing website. The new binding will access the same files as the other domain name. This saves you having to configure two websites for the same files. If later on there is a need to have a secure section in the website, you can add another binding for HTTPS. Three bindings, the same files, one site. Bindings can be done on the IP address, protocol, port and host names. It is possible to have two bindings with the same configuration. However, ISS will only allow one of these to be active at once. Consider this example. You could create a new website with all the same bindings as the old one. However, only one of these could be active at once. If you want to switch to the new website, first stop the old one and then start the new one. If there is a problem, you can stop the new website and then switch back to the old website. If you want to give the employees a look at the new website before everybody else, you could add the bindings for worldwideweb.extremecertification.local to the new website and then remove all the other ones. This would redirect all the company employees to the new website while everyone on the internet was still directed to the old website. As you can see, bindings gives you a lot of flexibility. Let's have a look how to configure bindings. First run ISS Manager from Administrative Tools in the Start menu. Expand down to the site that you want, right click the site and then select Edit Binding. You will notice that the default binding is HTTP on port 80. If I select the button Add, you can add a new binding for example, HTTPS for secure websites. Also notice, it is possible to have additional binding types that are not based on HTTP. By default, the binding will use all available IP addresses but you can select a particular IP address if you wish. Once I press OK, the binding will be added. Notice, I can add another binding for HTTP with a different port number and DNS name. You are free to add as many bindings as you like. Bindings make it a lot easier to create a single website with overlapping services. Previously, to do this, you would need to create multiple websites. Binding makes the administration of such sites easy. Windows Server 2008 will run all processes with equal priority by default. If you are using IIS to provide mission critical services, you may want to change the priority level of IIS. Using Windows System Resource Manager, you can configure Windows to allocate resources in a particular way, even under heavy load. Windows System Resource Manager also has a policy designed just for IIS. Using this policy, each application pool in IIS is given equal treatment. You can also make your own custom policy if you wish. Let's have a look how to install and run Windows System Resource Manager. To install Windows System Resource Manager, run Server Manager from Administrative Tools in the Start menu. Once loaded, select Features and then select the option Add Features. Select Windows System Resource Manager from the list. Windows System Resource Manager does require Windows Internal Database to be installed. This records statistics when it is running. If prompted, add this as a prerequisite. Windows System Resource Manager will now install. There is no options that you need to configure for the install. Once installed, run Windows System Resource Manager from Administrative Tools under the Start menu. Select the computer that you want to connect to, in this case, the local computer. To see which policy is being used, expand down to Resource Allocation Policies. You will notice that Equal Per Process Policy is the managed process. This basically means that this is the policy that is currently in use. Equal per IIS app pool is the policy that is created for IIS. If I select this one and right click on it, I can select the option to set it as a managed policy. This will disable the calendar functions but makes IIS app pool the currently active policy. The calendar functions allow you to set resource limits at different times of the day. In most cases, the default policies will work well but you can customize your resources any way you want by making use of the different calendar options. The administration console supplied with IIS is very simple to use and very powerful. 
You can perform the same commands from the command line using the executable appcmd.exe located in the INET SRV directory under System32 under your Windows directory. The basic syntax of the command is the command, the object you wish to work on, the name of the object, and lastly, the parameter and the value you wish to set it to. There are six basic commands that you can use with appcmd. These are add and delete, start and stop, list and set. If you need help, run appcmd followed by slash question mark. AppCMD is a great utility if you want to make a lot of changes to a lot of IIS servers or you want to perform changes via a script. Let's have a look at a few examples. If you want to add a new site, use the add command followed by the site and then the parameter name with the site name. Once your site is added, you can list it with the list command. If you want to view the current configuration file, you can use the command list config. The appcmd executable also allows you to stop and start websites. For example, if you want to stop the default website, you could use the following command. If you ever need help using a command, use the slash question mark. If you need help with a particular command, enter the command followed by slash question mark. Using the appcmd site, you can automate your ISS configuration. If you have a lot of IIS servers, using the command line can speed up making changes to your sites. With ISS 7, all the configuration of the server is held in a file, applicationhost.config. This file is located under System32, INET SRV, config directory under the Windows directory. The file is based on the XML format. This means that this file can easily be copied from one IIS setup to another. Being in a text file means that you can easily back up the configuration file and restore the configuration file as required. You can also edit the configuration file in a text editor. However, you are better off using the admin tool or the command line tools where possible. If you decide to make changes to a file with a text editor, make sure that you back up the file first. If you need to restore the configuration file to a server, you should restart the ISS service after you copy the file over to make sure that the changes take effect. ISS uses a hierarchical approach to configuration. This means that not all the configuration is in the application host.config file located in the Windows directory. If there is configuration that is only for the website or web application, this configuration can be found under the root directory of the website or application. This directory will contain another application host.configuration file. The settings in this file will override the server settings. The advantage of this approach is that when you copy the files from one web server to another, the configuration files for that website or web application are copied over as well. Previously, in the older version of IIS, you would need to configure the web server from scratch after you copied the data files over. The root directory may also contain another config file called web.config. The web.config file has the advantage that developers can add configuration information to this file. Keep in mind that when you're copying configuration files from one server to another, you need to make sure that the same components are installed on each server. If you are missing components on the target server, the website or web application may not work the way you expect it to, even though the configuration files were copied over. ISS also has its own backup system, which can save the configuration files on the local server and then restore them later on. This is done using the appcmd command. To add a new backup, run the command appcmd add backup, followed by the name of the backup. The current config files will be copied to System32 INET pub backup folder under your Windows directory. It is a good idea to include this folder in your regular backup. To restore the ISS config, run app cmd restore backup, followed by the name of the backup you want to restore. Lastly, you can view the current backups by running the command app cmd list backups. This backup system only backs up the configuration file to your local server. It does not replace a tape backup or other backup system. If you are running ISS in a server farm, you will have servers that need to run the same configuration. In the past, you would need to make changes to all the servers. Even with the improved administration and scripting options in ISS 7, it is possible in a large server farm to miss a server or two when making changes. ISS 7 allows you to share a configuration file with all the servers in your server farm. This means 
that you can guarantee that when you make a change to the configuration file that all servers in your server farm will have this change. To do this, first set up your ISS server and then export the configuration file. Once the file has been exported, you need to set up ISS to use the exported configuration file. The process is not too difficult to set up. Let's have a look how to do it. First of all, launch the ISS manager from the start menu. On this web server, I have moved store and the training website under the default website. These used to be their own websites. I want to apply these changes to another ISS server by sharing this configuration file. To do this, select your web server and then select the icon at the bottom, Shared Configuration. First of all, I need to export the current configuration to a share so that other ISS installs can read it. Select the option, Export Configuration from the far right. Select the destination you want to export the configuration file to. In my case, I want to export it straight to a share the other ISS servers can access. Next, you need to enter a password to encrypt the configuration file with, in case it gets into the wrong hands. That's it, your configuration file has been exported to your file share. Next I want to enable this ISS server to use that configuration file. To do this, select Enable Share Configuration and enter the physical path of the configuration file. You will also need to enter a username and password that has access to this location. Once this is done, press Apply and you will be prompted for the encryption password. Once this is done, the current configuration will be saved and the shared configuration will be used instead. If you deselect Enable Shared Configuration later on, your original configuration will be restored. Next, I want to use the same configuration on another server. If I switch to another server and log in, and then run the ISS administration tool, you will notice that this server has shop and training in separate websites. I don't want to make all these configuration changes again, so I will enable shared configuration on this server as I did with the other server. I just follow the same process as before, entering in the path, a user account, and a password. Once the encryption key is entered, the ISS server will start using the configuration on the share. I can't see the changes yet. All I need to do is close the ISS manager and reopen it again. Now, you can see that the store and training are under the default website. Note that ASP.NET client is located under the default website. This is because this ISS server has components on it that the other web server does not. When creating server farms, remember it is easy to share the configuration file with many servers but you still need to make sure that all servers in the server farm have the same components installed on them. If I create a new application under the default website like this, the configuration file on the share will be updated to reflect these changes. If I now swap back to the other ISS server and unlock the server, you will notice that ISS does not have this change. If I refresh ISS, the change appears. Using shared configuration, means that you can make a configuration change on any of the ISS servers in the server farm and it will be pushed out to all the other servers in the server farm. This makes shared configuration very powerful and easy to administer. That's it for managing ISS. You will find that regardless of whether you manage ISS via the command tool or the management tool, it is easy to use and set up. Just remember that if you plan to perform remote administration of ISS 7, make sure that the remote administration component is installed and configured on every server that you want to administer.